Hey everybody, my name is Carl Cashian and I'm a developer advocate at Small Step. And today I want to talk about IAM roles anywhere and how to use it with uh, a Small Step uh, certificate authority and command line tools. Um, first of all, so IAM roles anywhere is a new service that AWS just launched in July of 2022. And what it lets you do is you can authenticate to AWS using X509 certificates instead of traditional, you know, IAM, um, and, uh, traditional IAM credentials. And the way this works is it uses a security token service, um, which is also the same service that powers other um, sign-in um, methods with AWS. Uh, and you, if you present a, um, you know, prove that you have access to the private key for a certificate that AWS trusts, that you've configured trust for, then um, you present this to um, the Roles Anywhere service and, you get, and it will get you an STS token and give that back to you. That does, it'll return IAM credentials to you. Um, and then you can use those. Those are temporary credentials, but your service can use those or you can use those to access uh, AWS services. So that's the basic idea, using, um, using certificates to authenticate to AWS. Why would you want to do this? Um, one reason is that it lets you delegate your AWS authentication to an internal PKI. So if you run your own certificate authority um, already, um, you can have um, AWS trust that CA and then your certificates can be used um, and configured to, to, to be used with AWS. Um, and you can even limit like the cases where, you know, you can limit the subject names that are available um, that AWS will trust and things like that. So there's some ways to constrain the possibilities here. Um, this is a good option, I think, for non-interactive workloads, especially on-prem. You know, if you're outside of the walled garden of AWS, you can um, get a certificate from your internal CA and then use it to get AWS credentials. And you don't have to hard code anything. You know, you don't have to hard code or store IAM credentials in any secrets manager or anything like that. You just get certificates whenever you need it. Um, or you, yeah, you get a certificate whenever you need it. You get IAM credentials whenever you need them. And everything's kind of on demand. Um, and this works really well with the ACME protocol, which is the same protocol that um, Let's Encrypt uses um, to uh, issue certificates. So, you know, if you're using an internal CA with ACME, um, that makes it really easy to get certificates to your endpoints, to your servers, and things like that. Um, X509 certificates are nice too because they have, um, they have some good features. You can renew them, um, you can revoke them um, if they are exfiltrated in some way, and then you can, they're also, they expire. But I think most importantly, um, they're asymmetric. You know, a, a certificate represents, um, binds to a public key on a key pair, and you also have a private key that goes along with that public key. So certificates, this is like the first time I think AWS is, has allowed for asymmetric keys to be used to access, um, to access AWS resources. And what's nice about that is that private keys can be um, hardware bound. You can store them on a YubiKey, you can store them on a TPM, you can generate them in those places. And then um, they've never been on disk, they've never been uh, they're not exportable, and there's no way that um, while an attack attacker may be able to use a private key that's stored on a YubiKey or TPM, um, an attacker could not steal that key um, because it's uh, it's not exportable from the device. So you know, whereas IAM credentials, what even if they're stored in the secret manager or whatever, they can be stolen. Um, the other thing that's really nice about um, this approach to authenticating to AWS is that you can use a single certificate to authenticate to multiple AWS accounts, uh, as long as those accounts are set up to trust your CA. 
Um, you can use one certificate, get multiple IAM credentials. Um, and and um, yeah, use it across several client profiles. So now let's take a look at how this all comes together. This is the management console um, page for Roles Anywhere. And uh, I configure, I really only need to configure a couple of things in here. One is my trust anchor. This is where I just um, uploaded my CA certificate. That's all it is. It's my root CA for my internal CA. Uh, and then I also need to create a profile. And a profile uh, is a way of mapping um, these trust anchors to roles. So I created a profile called S3 read only. And um, it has roles attached to it. It just, well, it just has this one, the S3 read only role. Um, and it also has a section for adding policies, which really just limit the permissions granted by the role um, for this particular profile. So this role, um, this role has a maximum session duration of an hour. So I'm gonna get a session token that lasts an hour. And um, you know, it's a managed permission just the basic managed permission for S3. The trust relationship section um, maps it to roles anywhere um, as in, a, in terms of a trust relationship. And it also has this section where you can add conditions. Um, I've added a condition that's going to require that the subject common name on my certificate um, has to be, has to end with dot step dot land. And so, you know, I. This is just one way that I could limit um, which certificates get to use uh, IAM roles anywhere. In addition to, you know, the fact that they have to be issued by um, my CA. So that's the setup on the AWS uh, end of things. Now let's take a look at uh, how this would work um, on the command line. So I'm using the AWS um, CLI but, um, to do this demo, but any tool that, um, that uses the AWS SDK will work with um, the config file here. And, uh, and we'll read that config file. So if you know, you're using Terraform or um, anything else that uses AWS would read this config file. And what it does is, um, it's calling out to a credential process. So instead of integrating this into the AWS SDK, Amazon uh, released this signing helper. It's a request signing helper that um, you pass in um, your intermediate CA, a certificate, and a private key. Um, you pass in a trust anchor, um, or, you know, you, the RN for the trust anchor, the profile, and the role that you want to assume. And, um, and then it constructs the right uh, authentication request to AWS roles, any, to IAM roles anywhere. And all it does is it returns the IAM credentials, the temporary credentials to standard out. And then that, um, the, uh, the SDK uses those. So let's get a certificate uh, and we can see how this works. So I'm gonna create a certificate for um, this machine. I'm gonna use Acme. And now I have a certificate. You take a look at it. It's issued with my um, by my my CA, and uh, now I should be able to see my buckets. Yep. So that's the basic idea. I have a certificate that lasts a couple of weeks here, um, and I've got uh, the credentials to do what I need to do there. Um, that's the basic. Uh, that's the basic workflow, and you could do that anywhere. Um, one of the downsides of this is that it, um, you know, the 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 private key is stored on disk here, right? So essentially, we've recreated um, something similar to just having a an IAM um, access key and secret key on disk in a credential file. Um, by having a private key just sitting here. So I wanna show you another approach um, that we came up with. Now this is on my local machine. 
and it's just a prototype. But um, we have this plugin for the step command, which is a AWS login. And um, it's going to use a YubiKey slot uh, to store the private key um, instead of, and the certificate, instead of storing them on the file system. So we have to set that up first. Um, the way we do that is um, with the step KMS plugin. We're going to create a private key um, on the YubiKey. So that gets generated on the YubiKey, and then what, what it outputs is the public key part. Right, um, because you know I can't see the private key, um, and um, uh, so now the public and private key pair is stored on that YubiKey, and I want to uh, create a CSR so that I can get a certificate. Uh, so I'm creating a CSR uh, certificate signing request here using the key that I just the private key that I just created. Um, And should be able to inspect it. Yep. So this is a certificate request for to bind my public key um, that we just saw above there to um, the name carl.step.land. So let's go up to the CA and get that signed. Oops, uh, I need to switch to my local CA. And then we'll use Acme to get that signed too. Great, so I have a certificate now. Similar to the one on the other machine. Um, the difference is that there's no private key file. And um, I'm going to import that certificate onto the YubiKey as well. So I'm going to use the YubiKeys uh, utility to do that. So now that certificate and private key are both on the YubiKey. I can delete the CSR, I can delete the certificate, and I'm left with just the config file again. And now uh, I should be able to do the same thing I did on the other machine. But this time I'm using the YubiKey. Great. So I got, um, I'm accessing AWS using a private key that's generated on the YubiKey. And just for fun, I'm going to remove the YubiKey right now from my machine and unplug it and then try that command again. And it says, error, no YubiKey detected. So um, I think this, this is a nice way to use AWS. Um, and, you know, a similar kind of process could be set up uh, for a server using a TPM stored key. Uh, so, yeah, I think it would be, uh, you know, even if it's, even though the TPM is resident and isn't something that you would sort of be able to unplug, um, you can still put some nice um, constraints around how those keys are accessed, the conditions in which those keys are accessed. And, um, and yeah, so we love TPMs and we love YubiKeys here at Small Step. And, um, and it's really nice to see that Amazon has come up with this um, way to authenticate to AWS that uses the, those things, that can use those things and also uses certificates. Um, so uh, thanks so much for listening and watching today. I um, want to encourage you to try it out yourself uh, if you're interested. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can um, sign up for uh, a hosted CA of your own for free on smallstep.com. Um, and that's an easy way to get started without having to host your own internal CA. Um, or if you want to go the self-hosted way, you can get our uh, Step CA, Open Source Certificate Authority, uh, and download that um, and install it. And you'll have your own internal, uh, internal CA up in no time. Um, either of those can work well with uh, IAM roles anywhere. And um, we, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Um, you can jump into our Discord channel. Um, the link is below. And uh, we also are on GitHub Discussions. Uh, I'll put that link in as well. Um, and just really curious about uh, how you're going to use this stuff and um, what you think we should do next. All right, thanks a lot.